The House has been clear. This deal now has to change. There has to be an alternative found. And if the Prime Minister can't accept that, then she must go, not at an indeterminate date in the future, but now, so that we can decide the future of this country through a general election. A third defeat for Theresa May's Brexit deal. The UK Parliament has once again rejected her EU divorce deal, meaning Britain may crash out of the European Union in just two weeks. Chris O'Neill Yates tells us there's plenty of frustration being voiced in the streets of London. The protesters who've been gathered here all day are not too happy about the outcome of this vote. Theresa May lost the third vote in the House of Commons by 58. This means now that the whole process of Brexit is up in the air. Theresa May had put forward a plan that wasn't palatable to enough of the members of the uh, House of Commons. Therefore, now they'll be looking at next steps. One of those steps could be to go back to the alternative votes, those indicative votes that were held a couple of days ago. None of the eight options got an absolute majority. So right now they may explore some of those, like a customs union, one thing is for certain, because the deadline of tonight at 11 p.m. wasn't met, that they'll have to ask the EU for an extension. The date for the EU to uh, say goodbye to the UK was the 22nd of May. That's unlikely that that will be met right now because this was voted down. Right now, the leader of the Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn, is calling for Theresa May to resign. So in this country where people wanted this to move ahead one way or another, both the Remain camp and the pro-Brexit camp, this remains as stalled as it ever has been. And the thought that nobody wants to think about is that this could yet drag on for another couple of years. Chris O'Neill Yates, CBC News, London. Well, let's dig into this a bit deeper. Joining me now to discuss what the heck is going on in the UK is Eamon O'Neill. He's a BBC contributor and associate professor of journalism at Edinburgh Napier University, and he joins us from Edinburgh. Eamon, please forgive me because I just want to say on behalf of Canada, I'm so sorry for the pain and suffering your country is going through right now. Why isn't it clicking? Why isn't this Brexit deal coming together? Well, Natasha, first of all, thank you. I graciously accept your, um, your, your, your shared feelings about this mess, because for us, it's like watching uh, Friday the 13th, part 79, uh, where Jason keeps coming out the water and dragging people down to the bottom <laughs> of the lake. Um, in this case, we're talking about Theresa May, who was actually named this week as uh, the only leader who has tried to fall on her sword and actually missed the sword. Oh my um, so things are actually looking as bad as they can possibly get. And we really don't know where things are going to go next week. She is returning like the knight in Monty Python, minus his limbs, back to the battlefield next week to try possibly a fourth vote to get her withdrawal deal through Parliament. But at the moment, that's looking about as likely as me getting my hair back, Natasha. Okay, so is this all an exercise in futility? Is what would be the sense of a fourth vote if it's already been rejected three times? Well, you may well ask, but that's a bit like saying uh, to Sylvester Stallone, why do you keep reviving Rocky? Because he thinks it actually might win at the box office. And it's exactly the same with Theresa May. She keeps coming back in the hope that this modified deal in some way will attract some votes in the way that the previous ones have not. And really, at the moment, her logic must be something along the lines of um, I'm being less slaughtered every time I go back to Parliament. She is literally the embodiment of a sort of, not so much the walking dead, Natasha, as the ghost of the walking dead. Her logic, if she has one, escaped me, and I presume escaped you as well. Eamon, that's a whole yeah. lot of movie and television references, but help us understand. Okay. What what needs to happen? This thing has been going on for three years already. The deadlines have come and gone. Deals are not getting through. What is? Are people sincerely hoping that Brexit will just magically disappear and everyone can just well, pretend well, it never I, happened? I, yeah, I don't think so. I think that we are in a stage quite seriously where there are different options on the table for next week. There is the possibility that there could be something along the lines of a single customs union 
which would mean we would re we would remain the UK would remain within the trading bloc of the EU, but we wouldn't have a seat at the table. We wouldn't be able to debate what the rules were. There's also the possibility of some sort of what they call soft Brexit. We leave, but we leave in a sort of slightly less painful way than a no deal Brexit would be. And of course, the other option that could be on the table is another referendum, Natasha. They may actually come up with some sort of deal where they go back to the people. Now, any one of those configurations could be on the table next week. But here's the important point for viewers to understand. The power of what happens next has been taken out of the hands of the Prime Minister of, of the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland. She has got greatly diminished powers. And in all seriousness, her political future is really hanging by the thinnest of threads. Next week, Parliament will decide what they want to do. And as you said in your pre-package there in your intro, but we were meant to leave in May the 22nd, but now they're saying quite clearly, if you guys don't get your house in order, you're out on April the 12th, and you will crash out with no deal. Now, the big businesses, all the pressure groups, all the think tanks are saying that would be unthinkable for all the European economies, and particularly the UK economy. It really could take things into a strange place. So our colleague who was doing that report just before we spoke to you also noted that there's a possibility that this thing could drag on for another two years. Is that at all on the table? Yes. I mean, you could add anything to that. It could be two years, three years, four years, five years. At the moment, there's two views here. The view from London is that they are just trying to organise themselves to try and see a way through this sort of car crash, if you like, to try and get some sort of deal passed so that the UK doesn't crash out in April the 12th. That's the date that's important. But the view from Europe itself is also important. They're running out of patience. You have 27 EU, EU member states with all of different views, and they are saying different things about what they think should happen. Some are saying, look, come on, play along. Let the reason we have another chance. Let's string this out. Others are saying, no, throw them out in April the 12th. It's their own problem. They need to sort it out. And of course, the big thing that's important to remember is Ireland. The, 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 the sort of blocking uh, issue here was the backstop deal about the Irish border. So at the moment, a lot of pressure I'm hearing is coming from Brussels to Dublin to say, get your plan sorted out or sorting out the Irish border to make sure that the EU free trading bloc remains if it can exit on April the 12th. You're into uncharted territory. It's like a big flow chart and it could go in any direction, Natasha. Do you think there's any political leader in the UK that can elegantly navigate Brexit? Because it seems that leaders are coming and going and nothing is really working. Well, Theresa May is in a very unusual position of leader in as much as normally the, the pattern, the narrative would be that a leader would say, unless you vote for my plan, I will resign. She's actually saying, unless you vote for my plan, I'll stay. So people are actually saying, my goodness, she's going to stay, we better do something. And to answer your question directly, at the moment, there are probably half a dozen people who imagine themselves being political leader. But in reality, they're all looking at this and saying, you know that phrase about poison chalices? This doesn't even begin to touch that. Wow. OK, Eamon, we'll leave it there. I don't know if we're any further ahead at solving this issue, but thank you for helping us uh, clarify where things stand right now. My pleasure, Natasha. Thank you. You're welcome. Eamon O'Neill is a BBC contributor and an associate professor in journalism at Edinburgh Napier University, and he joined us from Edinburgh.